And anyway, the uh, let's get to the trade rumors, okay? Um, uh, this is mainly from KOC here coming out on the ringer. Is that right, Bobby? Yep. So everyone, so the, the names everyone's looking at now, Aaron Gordon was coming in. Um, John Collins as well. John is in play as well. What's, what's interesting, both Collins and mm. Gordon, um, and it feels like Barnes, the asking price seems to be the same exact thing, which is a young, a good young player and a draft pick and a first round pick. The problem with the Celtics is they don't have a good young player. Um, it, one of these. They have one. 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 They have Rob. one. Rob yeah. Williams. And, and now it. one of these reports has them. Uh, they tried to dish Collins to the Wolves for a first round pick and Malik Beasley and the Wolves said no. So, you know, it's lesser than Malik. Be you, it's lesser than Malik Beasley, but we don't. But seems to be greater than Aaron Neesmith. So, you know. That's here's the problem here. If the Celtics don't have a young player, are they in play for any of these guys? And if so, does it have to be Rob or multiple firsts? And that's kind of, I think, where we're at here. Well, yeah, the problem I'm with, with multiple firsts is that if they're coming from Boston, because right now they have all their own picks, they're going to be in the, in the, at best late teens, uh, but most likely in the 20s. And that gets you Grant Williams. That gets you, okay, hey, Pritchard, who's going to. Yeah, Maybe which, which to me, those two guys are an example of the feast or famine potential with late first round picks. So if you're giving up a, a, a guy of, of significant stature, you're not going to roll the dice or something like that. You want something that's a little more proven in terms of players. And Rob Williams is, is the only asset they have that's in that 25 and under range that teams want. And they're not parting with Rob Williams unless you're talking about some, you know, an, an Anthony Davis. Not even Vucevic, I don't think, even would be enough to convince Boston to do that deal. Uh, Vucevic looked mighty average against when he was guarded by Tice tonight, by the way. Um, he still he put up good numbers, but, man, he was not the dominant player I thought he would be. No, he, he, he didn't. Tice had him flustered. Tice was like, what, you, you guys want to trade for this guy? I'll take care of this dude right now. Yeah, and Gordon, and Gordon, Gordon, after a 38-point game, had an absolute dog shit game. Yeah, he did. Well, it always depends which team you're working with, too. The Magic in particular, Rob would probably be enticing for them, but they're oh God, moving yes. into the future with Vucevic. He's, he's their right. center. Rob's going to be backing him up if he ends up there. Maybe they have more of a stomach for a wing-style player, Pritchard at the point guard spot, that kind of stuff. And then mm -hmm. I think if you do kick out these picks enough into the future, throw enough into the bowl here, and we've seen this again and again with trades that have happened, if you throw two, three, maybe even four future first-round picks, John that Collins. gets teams moving. That, and, and again, John, it's not so much the player. This is their last opportunity to add a core piece to the roster. They don't have cap space into the future. They don't have young players, assets, I that kind of stuff. They're going to give four first-round picks for a player of that caliber. Well, you got to get this done somehow. And, and ultimately, think, it's going to be a high I, price. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. So you do yeah. Rob then. You, you do Rob then. Like there's, yeah, there's only two or three ways to do this, and Rob's so gonna you, be tough to swallow. So you do Rob and a pick for job Col John Collins. Do you think that makes you better? I think so. I you think it does. Think, you got to be pretty sure. Yeah, I disagree. I, see, that's I the thing. I disagree exactly. You just you just. I don't know if it makes you better I, today, let alone. I disagree with that better. because if I'm Danny Age, I'm like. Is that going to get us to the NBA Finals? You know, and if you're not sure, if you can't answer that question, then you don't do it. Not to mention the fact that Williams, Rob hasn't even reached his seat, nowhere near his ceiling yet, or at least I should put it this way, nowhere near the peak where you should sell. You know, you can get someone of a, of a better, you can get a better name than that. Honestly, well, the, I, the know, thing, right? The other thing too that that you got to keep in mind, and, and Danny has talked about this, is that road. they're. They're not going to trade for a guy that they don't believe – for a young guy that they don't believe they can keep in the full long term. And John yeah. Collins has put everyone on notice that if you want me, you better come with max money. Money. And right. Danny is looking at his roster saying, well, I got Tatum on max. I got, you know, Jalen near max. Kimba is max. John Collins? No, nah, bro. You good. <laughs> you nice. Right. But – that's not happening. That's everyone's problem here with Collins. Is is he worth? He's going to get the Jalen deal. Is he worth that deal? You know, yeah. right? Well, that's what I hope isn't the issue. I hope that all this uh, pushing into the future, kicking it down the curve, that kind of stuff, isn't just about money and the tax this year well, and the tax next year. No, it's about putting a team together that can win a title. And I don't think that adding John Collins is necessarily going to put you all of a sudden in that Brooklyn 
Philly, Milwaukee conversation. Yeah, if you want to give a couple of firsts because that's what it's going to take because you don't have the, the, the first is so useless to me. Throw three, four I'm out saying, the window. I mean, well, that's you're just not going to. Those that's you you need to replenish lottery tickets down in young talent when you can't when you can't afford other people you need something plus they're still well, when at, Brown and Tatum are gone I'm saying you can't do much else there you can't trade too many in the future unless it's for a stud stud so you got to be really careful throwing four picks at somebody for a, an okay wing player that's maybe going to start or be your sixth man that's not good business but uh, if they can convince. Uh, a team to trade. The the, the 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 situations with Collins and Barnes or Barnes and uh, Gordon are different. Barnes and Gordon have very team friendly deals for two right. years, and then you can decide if you want to extend them if they're working for you. Beyond that, you hold their rights. You have the contracts; they're movable. Those are great assets. I'd be willing. Well, that's to a good thing about Gordon. You Collins could match his contract. Collins yeah. makes no sense to me. No, none. Because and I love him as a player. I just wouldn't. I like him. Make a deal for him. Yeah. I think he makes sense from the standpoint that you – well, that's the thing about Collins too is you actually would match his contract. They use the Cantor TP because he's making $5 million right now. So both of those situations leave the TP out to the summer. The, the problem, as you say, with Collins is he would effectively fill that salary with the extension that would come there in the offseason. But as a restricted guy, you essentially get to keep him. You just have to know going in that that's what you're going to be paying him. So why are the Celtics interested if that's if – that's, Something you know going in, if you're going to acquire him, you have to pay him that level of money. Then they obviously they are interested in acquiring him. They may love him. They may they may really like something. But I just think, and I I hate giving up Rob for him, but I think he's more consistent, reliable. He still has upside, and he plays a more important position on the All court. Right. I'll ask you this: Celtics have played the Hawks a couple of times this year. Okay, who stood out more? Just if you were, if you were watching basketball for the first time, who's, who's made more of an impression in, in 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 the games? Rob Williams or John Collins? I can't remember a thing John Collins did. Well, you're you're alluding to the second game where he had uh, zero points in yeah, the first half. That was a game where first yeah. game he was solid. He was hitting three right, he's he's memorable is he? Like I said, he, you you have these guys that every once in a while they flash. Then you watch Aaron Gordon tonight, and you're like, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. You get geeked up for a minute, and then you're like, "They're good. They're okay. They're good. They're not great." You know, like that's the thing, John. That's how people feel about. I think that's how teams feel about Rob. They're like, "Wait, let me see this thing through." Yeah, he's intriguing. Don't get me wrong. There's still some capital there. There's still some value there in the market heading into this week. Obviously, here we're four days away or five days away. But I just, if you're Danny, I'm not cashing that card in until I can get. I, I max it out. You know, I max out that value, and I don't think I don't think they're there yet. I don't think they're anywhere near there. Yeah. So uh, what about the Bogdan rumors, Bobby? What are we hearing there? Well, that's a, that's a way to make it bigger. He would tap into the TP a little bit. So you'd be acquiring multiple mm -hmm. players to help the team at multiple spots in need this year. The thing is, he's hurt. Uh, he's been recovering right. from knee injury all year. And who oh, knows yeah. how he's going to come back off that. Uh, so <laughs> Atlanta probably doesn't love all the money they spent this offseason. And then the consideration with oh. Collins is money they'd have to stack on top of that. Uh, so this will be clearing the deck a little bit. And the tough part about this for the Celtics is that's even more long-term money there that wouldn't expire at the off season that Kemba would be coming up. And uh, some of the other money that comes up around that time does. So you'd essentially just be eating some of uh, Atlanta's salary here. That's gone a little too uh, high for their liking. Really messed up their off season. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. the, the, the thing that the problem that the Hawks have right now is that they went into the off season this past off season, looking to bolster the roster with big name uh, additions that could get them into the playoffs. And then they they came out the gates and they sucked. Got rid of the coach. Nate McMillan is running the show. Haven't lost the game since Nate took over. So now all the guys that they were having conversations with about possibly moving, their asking price yeah. obviously has gone up yeah. because Everyone they're playing better. Yeah. So now it's like they're in a tough spot because they can't really do the kind of deals they would have done if they were like the 14th best team in the East. Now you're like seventh or sixth. So if you're going to give up a piece and risk potentially not getting to the playoffs or hurting your team in the short term, you've got to get some assets. You've got to get more than, than frankly, than, than you're, you're giving away. And to Bobby's point, teams are probably going to have to give them three or four picks to get John Collins, even if those picks suck, even if those picks are like second rounders that are unprotected or, or, or some type of, of, you know, mechanisms by which they can get 
assets, whether they can maybe have the option of flipping picks. Yep. They have to get something that is bigger, grander, and greater than what you could have got done with them like maybe three, four weeks ago. But it's a good yeah. thing too. Uh, so true. The, you know what? It, it, Don't you feel like, Sherrod, I, I feel like Ainge sort of like put down the blueprint and everyone's like, oh, okay, that's how you do it with the, with the future oh, he, draft. Pick. You know, listen, like, he, he, he is, he's getting a taste of his own medicine. There's yeah, no doubt exactly, about it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No about it. And then Houston took a page out of that. You know, the other teams out in Washington, yeah. like that's the thing. And then now it's like when he, when he's the one calling, it's like, oh, wait a minute, Danny, you know what we want. You know what it's yeah. going to take. Like be, you know, be real. Don't now. get me <laughs> wrong. We, we've seen the risk of doing it. Houston's in an awful spot. Houston has had to lose 20 games because their picks go in Oklahoma City if they don't, mm. if they don't go to the bottom of the league because of that awful Russell yeah. Westbrook trade. So yeah, you can yeah. end up looking stupid pretty fast, giving up multiple first round picks, but it's either or, John. You know, you're probably not getting a deal done right don't now your pocket if you're not putting it on the table. You just don't dig into your pocket for four picks unless you're getting a slam dunk player in return, or you think you are. Obviously, anything can blow up in your face with injuries or somebody not performing to expectation, but you're doing it for a high, high level player, not a re- not a not a not a band aid. Okay, and, and that's where we're at here. Or a young player that you're gonna have for years to come.